Happy December everyone. Today's video is a bit more of an experimental landscape. I envisioned this being for absolute beginners, but then true to my way of painting, I started experimenting with different, uh, different techniques. So hopefully it will be easy for you to follow along. As always, the materials are going to be in the description. So the first thing that I am doing is wetting my entire paper so I can then use the wet on wet technique where I create the sky. Using a pink and an orange, you can choose whatever types of colors of pinks or oranges that you want to use or whatever colors best suit your preference. It really doesn't matter. So I am laying it down, blending it in, and then I'll add some orange. Honestly, I didn't really know what I was doing here as far as what my intention was. I was watching a TV show, if I'm being quite transparent, and I wasn't really paying attention. But sometimes that is quite nice because then you never know what you're going to get. I think it worked out in the end, um, but I didn't really have a plan for this painting. And also using a flat brush, a smaller one here, I decided to create a distant mountain and then a closer up mountain. Now I never use this type of brush to create my mountains or honestly the technique that I'm using here where you just sweep it and drag it across the paper, I never do that. So it was quite fun and it's quicker and you can really explore um, different shapes uh, this way. So if you haven't seen my other mountain uh, video, then be sure to check that one out. That's usually how I paint mountains, but you know, I'm kind of loving this. So I might start painting and exploring um, using this type of brush. So I use most of the things that I paint in this painting with that uh, with flatter brushes or square brushes. So I'm using Payne's Gray here and it's very messy and that's okay because I do go back and I layer it and you know um, play around with how I can shape it. But don't worry about it too much, especially if you're just starting out, just get the paint on the paper. You can extend your mountain like you see me doing here by getting a lighter wash and just making different shapes above the color. I also lift some of the color and then I drop in more color. Really, I'm just playing around with different texture. There, in my opinion, you can't really paint a mountain the wrong way because mountains are busy. They're kind of complex, different shapes, different shadows. So I just say have fun with it and see what uh, speaks to you. And then I'm swooping my brush across. I decided that I would do water. I wasn't sure if I was gonna do a frozen meadow. Really, I had no plan. Now I'm dropping in a bit more color here. It's still quite damp, by the way. The paper is still quite wet. So when I do add my brush or put my brush on the paper, it's going to lift some of the paint away. Now you might find that you may overwork your uh, painting, um, but you know, you gotta figure that out. And especially if you're new, um, you know, the way to not overwork your painting, of course, is to let it dry a little bit in between. But if you're wanting that texture and a little bit of lift, then you want to work it while it's still damp. And then I decided to create some trees here. So I'm just creating very distant abstract trees. So no branches, just sticks pretty much. <laughs> And I'm able to achieve this by turning my brush upward and flicking it up. And if you're new here or haven't subscribed already, I'd love for you to stick around so you can like and subscribe. And more importantly, leave me a comment. I love interacting with you. I will do my best to get back to the comments in a timely manner. Uh, but it might take me a few days, but I do read every single one. So thank you for your feedback, your comments, your kind uh, comments. It's very much appreciated and seen and um, yeah, just, just thank you for being here. So you can see now it's looking a little messy and 
I'm at this point not quite sure what my intention is for this painting, (laughs) but I figured I would show it anyway, and just the process of what I do when I'm not really sure what I am doing. I added a bit more of the pink there to have a reflection because I did decide to create that as water. And then taking a smaller brush, this is a size two by Graby, and I am dropping in some darker Payne's Gray. You can see at the bottom of the page it was a bit drier and that's because I wasn't sure if I wanted to create some dry brushing effect to emphasize some ice. Um, but then to spread it out, smooth it out, I added a bit more water on my brush and I wanted it to be a bit darker, closer to the bottom of the page and then get lighter towards the distance to reflect light. And of course, just the depth of field. And then I continued to play around with adding darker to lighter, um, uh, pigment of that Payne's gray. And really, it's up to you. Now, I do do something crazy where I add some um, very opaque watercolor. So it's P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White. And I did that to emphasize some uh, ice. But don't fret. Don't worry. (laughs) I do smooth it out. But that was me exploring and playing around. And I really encourage you to do that as well. Is this the best painting that I've done? No, by any means, but it was fun to do. And uh, why not show you some of the different techniques that I do that may not be something most watercolor artists do? Um, You know, uh, you can get a bit more icy effect by using a different color or shade of blue, but I've been having a lot of fun using the uh, bleed proof white and it's looking a little crazy I mean that almost looks like I have ruined the painting (laughs) in my opinion but um, I place it where I would think the ice would be and or frozen lake and then I go ahead and smooth it out Um, you can smooth it out by adding a bit more water on your brush and just dragging it And then I do go over it with a more dry brush of the Bleed Proof White to emphasize um, either cracks of ice or maybe there's some waves uh, there. Really, it's up to you and your imagination. It honestly doesn't matter. So, but I think it was, it turned out in the end. But the Bleed Proof White is quite fun to play with and act as snow and, um, and ice. And once I was happy with that for the moment, I went ahead and added a bit more of that um, orange and pink mixture to darken it. Now it's looking a bit rough and a bit messy at this stage, but that's okay. Uh, I wanted to add a bit darker areas because it was looking a little bit too opaque and milky or creamy, um, which, you know, I, I like, I absolutely love using white in my watercolor paintings. Not all artists like using white. I totally understand that watercolor, um, because it's so translucent, you can get that lighter, but if you like those more muted and kind of creamy, milky, uh, hues, then white is a fun way to achieve that. And again, you'll see me switching different brushes to drag it. Now I have used a bit of the Bleed Proof White mixed in with the the Payne's Gray and then realized that it was a bit too blue and a bit too light. So going back in from just the Bleed Proof White, (laughs) I cannot say that word (laughs) or the name. Um, And I, am just dabbing it in wherever I see fit, starting to shape the different areas and crevices of where the snow might be. And I wanted this mountain to feel a bit cold and, um, you know, very cold. It's December, winter is upon us. Not quite winter yet, 
it's still technically fall <laughs> where I'm at anyway, though we have had moments of snow and then it goes away and melts and then it comes back <laughs> and then it melts. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's all I pretty much do is add in more of the bleed proof uh, white and I alternate between having more of the dry brush and then smoothing it out with a bit more water So you can see in that upper right hand area of the mountain. It's very creamy. It's very soft and then I go back in with a dry brush and You know, sometimes I will have to let it dry and then add a bit more and then if you find that you do use this for your mountains and maybe you go a bit overboard and it just becomes a, a bit of a white creamy mess, you can absolutely let it dry and then go back in with the color that you used for your mountain and then darken it up, which I do here, which really gives quite a intense contrast. You may like this, you may not. I mean, honestly, that's fine. <laughs> um, I encourage you to explore and create different uh, you know, different textures in your watercolor paintings. And I think it's really fun to use mixed media in your uh, watercolor paintings to emphasize different um, effects or textures. It, it, you know, I am all on board for that. So you can see I'm adding now a bit more of the dry brush on top of it. Now for this mountain, I felt that it was a bit soft compared to the one with all of the texture. So I went ahead and dipped my brush back into the Payne's Gray on the dry mountain and just did these little dots and smushing of my brush to create some texture. And I really liked this effect. I thought it was quite fun, um, adds a bit more depth. I did go over it with the gouache, realized not the gouache, the bleed proof white, realized I wasn't a big fan of that, so I left it. And then I found that this lake was not as dark as I wanted it to be, so I added a bit more of the orange with a bit of the pink in there, but you can see it's a bit orange, and then realized it was a bit too dark, not to worry, since um, it's dry, I was able to lift some of that paint off and add a bit more water to my brush to smooth it out. And here's where I'm adding in the Payne's Gray. And it's quite um, dark and I wanted to create some shadows. So that's what I did here. I feel like the contrast of mountains is when it really can come to life and look really, uh, you know, quite cool and really fun. I don't know about you, but using these different techniques for this mountain almost reminded me of what you'd get in maybe like acrylic painting. Now, I'm not an acrylic painter. Uh, that is not a medium I use, but that's what it reminds me of. Are any of you acrylic painters or oil? I've been wanting to use um, oil for a long time. Um, so I might explore, uh, explore that at some point, who knows, but watercolor is my main, uh, my main jam. And I wanted to darken the trees up, so going back in with the Payne's Gray and swooping it up. I used a limited color palette today. I feel like Payne's Gray uh, works really well with these pastel uh, pink shades and orange. Uh, just an easy color combination. And if you're new, I feel that sometimes color can be overwhelming um, and confusing. So just picking like two or three colors uh, might make it easier to have a well-blended um, painting. And for those reflections, I am just adding in some darker pigment here and just tapping it in. Because I envisioned this to be a bit more of a frozen lake. Now, not all of it is frozen. You can see in the middle there it's not, but on the edges it is. Um, it's not gonna be a perfect reflection of what you see in the sky. 
And then I'm adding that white again to emphasize maybe some frozen ice, whatever it is. And now that that mountain is dry, I wanted to go back in and layer it. This is a very messy painting and not in a style that I typically paint in, but it was a lot of fun to do. So I hope that you, of course, enjoy this and can find some tips in here or inspiration for your own painting. Now, I thought I would add a bit more of that white to emphasize maybe a snowbank um, or some edge between the water and the landscape. And then of course I had to add some snow in here. So using a very tiny uh, deer foot type of brush, I dipped it in that bleed proof white and now I am flicking on some snow in concentrated areas that I want it to be in. And of course, if you haven't already, I'd love for you to subscribe and like and leave me a comment. That would be wonderful. And the best part, of course, is always taking the tape off. <laughs> and I hope that you enjoyed this video and found some inspiration and, uh, and enjoyed it. So, And I look forward to posting the next one. But until next time, my friends, uh, happy painting, happy December, and look forward to more videos this month. All right, I will go ahead and leave you with this quote. Take care, my friends.